the Harriet Tubman autobiography movie, otherwise known as The Toxic Avenger. In 1984, Lloyd Kaufman and Michael Herz released The Toxic Avenger, the story about a nerd named Melvin who, after falling into a vat of toxic chemicals, transforms into a monstrous mutant with superhuman strength. Melvin, now known as Toxie, then goes to seek revenge on the bullies who taunted him, as well as to the streets to take care of a few small-time criminals. It's your typical campy 80s film. It has a cult following nowadays, but when it was released back in 1984, it went on to be ignored for a long time. But for the few audiences who did see it, they were absolutely shocked. The film includes the standard exploitation themes, such as nudity and a fair amount of gore effects, but this film is unique on a few different levels. Its characters are completely over-exaggerated. For example, the bullies in this film aren't your standard playground bullies. In one scene, the bullies beat up an old lady before stealing her car and then revel in it. <laughs> Did you see her face when I punched her? <laughs> Beat that old lady like a dog. And then, you know, not to mention, there's also the scene where they run over the kid on the bicycle. I mean, just look at him. He's helpless, struggling to crawl to safety. Well, the bullies see this and run him over again. It's the only movie in history in which a young boy's head was squashed by the wheel of an automobile that was subsequently made into a politically correct environmental Saturday morning television cartoon show. This was in fact the scene that got the film banned on most television networks back in the day. In most cases, you'd find that they would cut that scene out, but most of the scenes involving nudity would go untouched. Now with all this background information, why don't we ask ourselves, is the Toxic Avenger really art? I mean, after all, cinema is and should be art, right? Do movies like this, that feature a man threatening to kill a baby and another man attempting to rape a blind girl, really belong in the timeline of cinematic masterpieces or cult classics? Let's break it down. Let me introduce you to writer and director Lloyd Kaufman. What's going on, uh, Lloyd? Whoa. What's going oh, on back here? Oh, I, I was just, uh, uh, I love Lost. It's my favorite TV show. And Lloyd Kaufman is the co-founder of Troma Entertainment, which was founded in 1974. The independent studio is famous for their slogan and their virtues of real independence. Get it? Real independence? Like a film real? Ah, get him out of here. So when judging a film, it's fitting to look at the director's intentions when making the movie. What did Kaufman want to say? Did he want to make a statement about how toxic waste is a real, real, <laughs> is a real issue and that we need to learn how to dispose of it properly? I mean, I don't know, maybe. But I think the real importance of The Toxic Avenger doesn't necessarily lie in the actual content of the film itself, but in what the director and studio's intentions were while filming. Lloyd has written a number of books regarding the process of independent filmmaking and in doing so has encouraged many filmmakers to go out and make your own damn movie. So Toxie, tell us, when the experts and the critics and the pundits are telling us not to do something, what do we at Troma do? We do the opposite, Uncle Lloydy. And in this case, we made the Toxic Avenger. So when it comes to the nudity and gore and cussing the film displays, I mean, does it really all matter? The fact of the matter is, real independence means that an artist should not be bound by the standards of what makes cinema good or not. What makes cinema good is the passion the crew and cast display during filmmaking, at least in my opinion, and I think that this reasoning in and of itself actually makes the Toxic Avenger art. 
but let me know what you think down in the comment section below. And if you haven't already checked out the Toxic Avenger film or any other trauma entertainment films, I encourage you to do so if you're into the whole independent filmmaking culture. It's an acquired taste, let me tell you that.